Hey guys, it's Jen. Welcome back. Today I wanted to do another new palette dupes video. So this is something I started back in February and for a while there I was doing these every single week because new releases were super crazy and now ever since the pandemic things kind of came to a screeching halt and we didn't have a lot of new releases for a while and they've been coming back but kind of more slowly so there's quite a few weeks in between each one of these episodes which in a way is good because I think we were just all on makeup overload but in another way I get Requests for these videos all the time and I'm like I just don't have enough to do like one full video but I finally do so we're gonna go ahead and get started and for those of you who are new to my channel these are videos that basically are not talking about exact shade for shade dupes but just looking at older palettes compared to newer ones that have come out and seeing if there's any similarities or if they have like a similar kind of dupable vibe to them where you may feel like you don't necessarily have to go out and buy the newer palette these aren't formula dupes and in some cases the new palette is actually more expensive than an older one so I'm not trying to do drugstore dupes either. The whole point of these videos is just to avoid too much repetition in our makeup collections. If you like repetition then that's totally cool as well but for me personally because I have such a big collection I'm trying hard not to keep buying the same things over and over again. So let's go ahead and start out with the first palette and that one is the Morphe 35C Everyday Chic Artistry Palette. So my friend Ashley over over on Instagram who I DM back and forth with all the time. She sent me a picture of this palette when it first came out and right away she was like, doesn't this look just like the Emily Noel Wants palette from Makeup Revolution? And I totally agreed. I think it really, really does. There's so many similarities between these two palettes. I was kind of blown away. And really, I'm not a huge fan of Morphe. So because I already have the Emily Noel palette, I really, this is not tempting me at all, even though I think the color story is really, really pretty and something that I would gravitate toward. Um, you know, chances are I wasn't gonna buy something from Morphe anyway, and it just makes me feel a little bit better that I already have the Emily Noel palette, so I'm good. Next up is the Pure Cosmetics Defense Palette. This is supposed to be anti-pollution eyeshadow and on Trend Mood's page, there was so much negativity surrounding this palette. People saying, what does anti-pollution even mean? And I think basically they put ingredients in there to kind of help protect your skin against the effects of blue light and from the environment. But you know, it's eyeshadow. I feel like that kind of makes a little bit more sense when it comes to like skincare or a foundation or something that you're gonna be putting on on a larger area of your face. But anyway, not to go off on a tangent, when I saw this one, I immediately thought of Tati's Textured Neutrals palette. Not necessarily with the glitters and stuff because the Pure palette really doesn't have those glitters, but I think the color story is really close. And granted, Pure's palette has a lot less shadows in it than the Tati one, but if you look like on the left-hand side of the palette, you have like that gray kind of smoky vibe going on. And then in the middle of the palette, you have more of those warm toned neutrals. And then and on the right hand side of the pure palette you have those berry tones so it kind of like follows the pattern of the Tati palette and it's not an exact dupe but it kind of seems like it's inspired by it so I thought that was pretty interesting next up we have the one size palette from the new Patrick Star collection and when I saw this one the first palette that came to mind was the Urban Decay Gwen Stefani collab I actually still have this palette in my collection even though it's been discontinued for years because I really really loved it it's just a great neutral palette and it's basically like neutrals with a pop of blue and that's what a lot of people were saying about the Patrick Star palette but that one I think has a little bit more variety to it because you also have those olivey greens thrown in which I personally really like I think it's actually a very nice color story even though some people might consider it to be boring so in some ways there's some similarity with the Gwen Stefani palette but in other ways I think the Patrick Star one is a little bit more versatile when it comes to the colors and then the next one it reminded me of was was the Lorac Pro 2 palette. And this is one that I always think of being as more of a cool tone palette, but it is kind of more of a mix of warm tones and cool tones. And the Patrick Star palette is pretty much exactly the same thing. You have that olivey green shimmer in both palettes. You also have that deep blue as well. You have that one that's kind of like a really deep brown, but it looks a little bit purpley. And also in the Lorac palette, you have like the yellowy tan shade and a couple of the neutrals. So I 
I think, you know, again, while they're not exact shade for shade dupes, I think there are a lot of the same colors in the Patrick Star palette and the Lorac, so you might feel like you don't have to necessarily run out and buy the Patrick Star one. And then next up we have the e.l.f. Retro Paradise palette, so I'm not going to spend too much time on this one because I actually did a video showing swatches and comparisons between some of the palettes in my collection, so I'll go ahead and link that above in case you want to check that out. That's actually over on my swatch channel, so a lot of you guys may not have seen that one, and I'll just quickly go through some of the dupes that I found from that video. The first one being the Juvia's Place Magic Palette, and this one is so close. It's immediately what I thought of when I saw the promo photos for the Retro Palette, because it has so many of the same shades, particularly those brighter colors that kind of pop out at you, like the blues and the greens and the reddish orange color and the gold. Um, you know, it's not, again, like shade for shade, every single one the same, but I do think the vibe is really, really close. Another one I thought that the Retro Paradise Palette looked kind of similar to was the Wet n Wild Not A Basic Peach Palette, and this one, doesn't have the bright pop of green or the purples in it, but I feel like the rest of the palette is so close. It also doesn't have that reddish orange, actually the bright one, but I swatched like every shade that I thought was similar side by side, and it's a good chunk of the palette that is like almost spot on. So I thought that was pretty interesting. And then last but not least, we have the Profusion Festival palette. And this one, I found so many dupes of palettes using this one because it's so huge and there's so many different colors, but it really does encompass like almost all of those shades in the e.l.f. palette. You have like the purple and the blue and the green and some of the brighter colors as well. And I really was like blown away by how much similarity there was with these two. And I know a lot of people have the Festival palette, so I wanted to throw this one in there. Granted, it doesn't have that really beautiful dual chrome shade that the elf one has so that one is unique I think for that shade alone I use that one all the time in retro paradise so you know, I mean, the e.l.f. palette is pretty inexpensive, so I feel like even if you do have ones that are similar, it might make sense to go out and buy it anyway, just because the formula is really, really good on it. All right, so next up we have the Viseart Midsummer and Solstice palettes, and both of these palettes just launched this week, and they are super cute. They're like little mini versions of some of their bigger palettes, but they don't have any of the same shades. I feel like they're just kind of like vibing the bigger palettes again. So when I saw these, the first thing I thought of was the Paris Edit palette and also the Spritz palette. They just seem like kind of mini versions of those, even though they're completely different. When you look at them really closely, I don't see any exact dupes within the shades in these palettes, but I just think again, like they kind of take that vibe and just make it a little bit smaller, which, you know, I think they're cute. I don't have the bigger ones and I really, really like the look of the smaller ones. So I may end up getting them. They're actually sitting in my cart right now. I might just go ahead and do it. They're really pretty. So when it comes to the Midsummer one, the first palette it reminded me of was Urban Decay's Back Talk palette. I know that one didn't really have the best reviews. I didn't find the formula to be so great, but I really loved the color story just with those rosy tones. I thought it was so beautiful. So that's another reason I'm kind of leaning towards getting the Viseart, just because I liked the color story of the Urban Decay, but not really the formula. I ended up decluttering that palette, but I do think they look really, really close. And then another one I thought it looked pretty close to was ColourPop's Blush Crush palette. And, um, you know, when I looked at them side by side, I was like, eh, they're kind of similar, maybe. And then I went ahead and compared the swatches. And once they're both swatched out, I really really think these are very similar when it comes to just the overall vibe of the palette. I don't know if there are any shades that exactly match each other, um, but they're pretty close, at least in the swatches. Again, it's really hard to tell like on a computer screen, but I don't know. I think definitely vibe-wise, they both are very, very similar. And then when it comes to the Solstice palette, the first thing that I thought of when I saw kind of that mix of warm tones and the rosy tones was ColourPop's Give It To Me Straight. That's another palette that I really love because it has that nice mix and balance of, like I said, those rosy tones and also some warmer tones. And I think these two look really, really similar. Um, the ColourPop one has more shades in it, but if you kind of try to take away the ones that aren't alike, I think there's a lot going on here that's the same. The only thing is the Solstice palette, you can see in that bottom right corner, there's that beautiful shade that kind of looks like a duochrome, which is not in the ColourPop one. So that's another thing I think might make the 
Visi Art palette a little bit more unique. And then another one, just color story wise, that I thought was very similar to the Solstice palette was the Bobbi Brown New Drama palette. This one also, I mean, very similar. The Bobbi Brown again has more shades and you have like that deep charcoal gray shimmer in there and also a black that the other one doesn't have. But again, it has that mix of the warm tone neutrals mixed with like the beautiful rosy tones. So at least just looking at the pictures side by side, I think these two look very, very close. Okay, so the next palette I wanted to talk about is the ColourPop Wild Nothing palette. When I first saw this one, I said, I have to have this. It is so beautiful. It's right up my alley as far as the colors go. In a way, it sort of reminded me a little bit of the retro mini palette from Natasha Denona, even though it has a lot more shades than that. I feel like it has the same vibe. And then I kind of sat back and thought about it and I'm like, didn't ColourPop have one that was close to the mini retro? Because I remember doing a comparison of those and then it hit me that it was She's Got Solstice. And that was the one that came out shortly after the lockdown. It was an Ulta exclusive. And even though ColourPop wasn't producing palettes anymore, they did come out with that line at Ulta. And I, I think these look so incredibly similar to each other. I was really like blown away. But the difference that I really saw when I was looking at the two palettes side by side is that She's Got Solstice has a little bit more like pinks in it while the Wild Nothing looks a little bit more peachy. But when you look at the swatches side by side, and I want to thank my friend over on Instagram, Coils of Love, for sending this to me. Um, this is a comparison. These shots are both from ColourPop's page. So they're ColourPop's photos. And I just think that these look so close when you see them swatched out. So I was kind of like, hmm, I guess I don't really need that Wild Nothing palette after all, um, because I have She's Got Solstice, but it is so pretty. I really, like if I didn't have She's Got Solstice, I definitely would have purchased it. Um, next up, we have the P. Louise Worldy palette. So I think this one's not out yet, but it's gonna be coming out at some point in September, I think I saw on Trend Moods page. And when I saw this one, it reminded me a lot actually of the Ace Boutte Oceanic palette. Now the P. Louise one has a purple and also like in the bottom row, they have those two orangey shades on either end. But if you cover those up, I think there's a lot of similarity going on here. And again, I know a lot of you guys have mentioned to me that you have the Oceanic palette from Ace Boutte because you keep telling me to buy it and I haven't pulled the trigger yet. But, um, you know, I think that if you have that one, then this P. Louise release, it just, it looks really close to me. And I feel like even if the shades aren't exact dupes for each other, you could come up with really, really similar looks. And then last but not least, we have the Natasha Denona Bronze Palette. And I get a lot of requests to find dupes for this. And I actually did a video on that also on my Swatch channel. But just because it's such a new channel, I feel like a lot of you guys may have missed that video. So I'll link it above. But I wanted to just show you quickly two of what I think are the most similar dupes from that video. The first one being the California Love Palette from ColourPop. So this one... I didn't exactly think they were similar when I saw them in the pan, but I could pick out like a couple of colors that I thought were really close. And then once I actually saw them swatched out, I was blown away by how similar these two palettes are. I mean, really the only thing that the ColourPop is missing is like that deep purpley blue shade that's in the Natasha Denona. Everything else kind of just lines up perfectly. And honestly, I prefer ColourPop's formula to Natasha Denona's anyway. I just feel like it's a little bit easier for me to work work with. So if you have the California Love palette already, you pretty much have most of the shades in the bronze palette. And then another one I thought was really close to was the Wet n Wild My Glamour Squad palette. This one's a really close dupe for Anastasia's Soft Glam, but I also think it's very similar to the bronze palette as well. And again, it doesn't have that purpley blue shade, but looking at the swatches, you can see that a lot of the other shades are very similar and line up pretty well. So again, if you have this one, you may not necessarily want to spend your money on the Natasha Denona one. All right, guys, so that's everything. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you did, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. And also, I would love to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. If you think any of these palettes are dupes for other ones that you could think of, I would love to hear your thoughts. And if you're not subscribed already, don't forget to hit that subscribe button before you go. Thanks, guys, and I'll see you all in my next video. Take care. Bye.